G'day and welcome back to our Ultimate Guide series. Today, we'll be covering stick welding and everything associated with it. So let's get started. But first, what is stick welding? Manual metal arc welding, otherwise known as MMA or stick welding, is one of the oldest types of welding and is still widely used today on various applications, such as construction and earth moving equipment. Thanks to its simple technique, it's perfect for those who don't want the hassle of a gas bottle or want to weld thicker pieces of metal. This process is done with a power source which is used to create an electric arc between the flux covered electrode and the workpiece. Strike the electrode against the metal to ignite it and then melt the electrode into the joint to create the weld. The flux or protective coating is left on the weld, creating a top coat known as slag, which needs to be removed to achieve a clean weld. Don't forget, safety is our number one priority because you're working with blinding lights, electrical currents, sparks and hot pieces of metal so make sure you've got the appropriate safety gear before you start. This will include a welding helmet, a pair of MIG gloves, and a welding jacket. It's also a good idea if you're working in an indoor environment to use a respirator like this one to reduce inhaling the fumes. We're going to break down stick welding into six main categories for the best explanation. These are what you need to start stick welding. Different types of electrodes, torch setup, machine setup, how to stick weld, and extra accessories. Starting with what you need to stick weld, you're going to need a few main components before you start. These are a capable stick welding machine, an electrode holder, and electrodes. We'll discuss the different types of electrodes in the next section. Stick welding can be done on all MMA capable machines, with almost all multi-process machines coming with an electrode holder and an MMA function. You will not need gas for this process. And now, moving on to electrodes. These are a flux covered core wire that melt down to create the weld. There are many types of electrodes, but the most commonly used are general purpose electrodes, such as 6013. These are the most popular and are a great all round electrode for general fabrication. 6012, great for general fabrication, specializing in horizontal fillet welds on high currents. Stainless steel electrodes, 308L, Perfect for welding austenitic stainless steels. 309L, suitable for welding the similar metals. The 316L, these are marine grade and are recommended for anything that will be used around water. Low hydrogen electrodes, 7016, better known as the 16TC. These are great for welding structural steels or pressure vessels. 7018, these are very similar to 7016 electrodes but with added iron powder which will lead to a better deposition rate. Cast iron electrodes. NI402. These have a pure nickel core and are more malleable than 416. NI416. These have nickel and iron core and have a higher strength property than the NI402. Hard facing electrodes. H531. For use on equipment that will encounter severe abuse, such as teeth on earth moving equipment. H528, similar to H531, however more commonly used on cement crushers and cement and oil presses. Finally, single versus twin coat electrodes is a heavily debated topic that we'll break down for you right now. To start, most electrodes are single coated, which means that all the ingredients needed to make it both conductive and protective are included in the same outer layer that coats the inner core. What is a twin coated electrode though? It's exactly what it sounds like, it's got two layers. The inner layer contains the ingredients that ionize and make it conductive, which provides a stable, concentrated arc around the wire. The second layer contains a shielding and slag forming components. It is non-conductive, which also helps to concentrate the arc and make it easier to direct. The 7016, otherwise known as the 16TC, is a popular twin coated low hydrogen electrode, which needs to be stored in an electrode oven for best welding results. As a final note, most electrodes come in 2.6, 3.2 and 4mm sizes, with the bigger the electrode relating to the bigger the weld to be done. Also remember that the bigger the electrode, the more amps you'll need to melt down the core wire to create the weld. So now, let's talk about electrode holders. There are two types of electrode holders that are available to you, the twist lock type and the tong type. The most significant difference between these two electrode holders is how they look. The twist lock holder has a square opening which clamps your electrode into place once the head is twisted clockwise. The tongs look exactly like tongs, with grooves along the insides for the angle you want your electrode. The reality is that both these types of electrode holders do the exact same thing, 
but here in Australia, the twist lock type is most popular, which is why most of our stick welding machines made by Unimig come with the twist lock type when you purchase them. So we'll be using twist lock as our preference for the rest of this video, and now it's time to set up our machine for stick welding. Start by plugging in your machine and turning it on. When it comes to polarity, stick welding can be done in both positive and negative polarities. So the easiest way to set it up is to cross check the electrode type and make sure you set up the right polarity. We'll be using our brand new HyperArc 6013 general purpose electrodes for this process, which asks for a DC positive connection. So we will attach our earth clamp to the negative panel mount and our electrode holder to the positive panel mount. Now make sure you set your machine to MMA mode. Change your amps to suit and the way you weld. We'll show you the best technique for each position later on in the video. Another feature that you can turn on and off on some of our machines is a keyable VRD feature. VRD stands for Voltage Reduction Device. Some machines have a keyable switch, which means that this setting can be turned on or off to suit your application. We would always recommend to keep this on for safety and it's mandatory to have on when working on site in Australia. So now it's time to start stick welding. Some cleaning and grinding may be required if paint or grease is present, the surface rust is okay since welding with electrodes is more forgiving. There are three main factors to consider when welding. Work angle, travel angle and distance, and travel speed. To make this simple, always have your electrode on a 45 degree angle to the weld joint, keeping a consistent distance from the weld joint, about three millimeters or so from the tip of the electrode, and make sure to strike the electrode like a match at the start of the weld to ignite the arc. If you do not follow these steps, you can end up with a world full of contaminants, ending in a world that looks like this. However, the way to get this right is by practicing grabbing a couple of pieces of metal and trying it out for yourself. So now, let's talk about positional welding. When you're starting out, it's always best to start out doing downhand butt welds. So you need to angle your torch like this, travel at around this pace, making sure to drag, not push the electrode along the joint. You should then be able to chip off the slag with your chipping hammer and clean it with a wire brush and get a final weld that looks like this. So now moving on to a horizontal butt weld and this is very similar to a downhand butt weld. So make sure to angle your electrode like this. Travel at around this pace, making sure to drag, not push the electrode along the joint. You should then be able to chip off the slag with your chipping hammer and clean it with a wire brush and get a final weld that looks like this. With an overhead fillet weld, you'll have to drop your amps by around 15 due to you now working against gravity. 
making sure to angle your torch like this, travel at around this pace, and making sure to drag, not push the electrode along the joint. You should be able to now chip off the slag with your chipping hammer and clean the weld with a wire brush and get a final weld that looks like this. With a vertical fillet weld, once again, you'll have to slightly change your amps to help the weld solidify a little bit faster because you're working against gravity. We also switched from a 6013 general purpose electrode to a 16TC for better results on this position. Dropping the amps again by about 15 compared to a downhand weld. To do this weld, it's a bit more complicated. Making sure to start at the base, weaving side to side to create a bed to support the rest of the weld. Then moving upwards in a triangular motion, pausing at the sides and punching into the corner. You will now need to do a capping run. Again, starting at the base to build a bed and working your way up in a weaving motion, pausing slightly at the sides, making sure to keep your weaves tight. You should then be able to chip off the slag with your chipping hammer and clean it with a wire brush and get a final weld that looks like this. Finally, let's talk about some extra accessories. Firstly, some essential accessories that are a must have while you're welding are a chipping hammer, wire brush, 
and right angle magnets. The right angle magnets are perfect for keeping your pieces of metal together while tacking. As for the chipping hammer and the wire brush as I mentioned before, these are the best way to clean off the slag off your weld. An electrode oven is also a great option for low hydrogen electrodes as it bakes the moisture out of the electrode helping to create a contaminant free weld every time. Thanks for watching our ultimate stick welding guide. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to drop a like and we'll see you next time.